What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another interview edition of Learn Crypto. Today I have with, the, with me Jake Greenbaum, the founder of the soon-to-be Anon Project, which will be a fork of Z Classic and Bitcoin focusing on privacy. How are you doing today, Jake? I'm wonderful. How are you, Nick? Pretty good. Can't complain. Another day here in crypto land. So before we get started, let's make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Also, any relevant links will be in the description below. And don't be afraid to let us know what you guys think about the Anon project in the comment section below and whether or not we all should be participating in this soon to be fork. So I guess to start, Jake, if you just want to give us a brief background on yourself and how you really got started into cryptocurrencies. Yes. Well, my name is Jake Greenbaum. I got started in crypto about a year ago. I was very interested in revolutionizing the system. I was a finance major originally, then I went to law school. Thought the finance system was broken after studying finance, thought the law system needed some work, and decided crypto seemed fascinating. Became a trader in the um, middle of last year, eventually became a journalist in the space, started writing on different things that I was noticing, and my popularity took off enough where I decided it was time to do some projects. So I decided Anon would be a great first project. No one has to be an investor per se, because you, all you have to do is own Z Classic or Bitcoin to receive a free Anon. So it was a really nice project to get my foot in the door as far as getting into the crypto space with projects. That's awesome. Now, when you were deciding to create Anon, why did you decide to do the Z Classic and Bitcoin fork rather than starting using airdrops or an ICO or any of these other methods? Why did you stick with Z Classic and Bitcoin as your, as your target? Well, Z Classic had a, uh, has had many issues in the past. They have privacy tech that we really respect, the ZK Stocks privacy tech. And a lot of people thought Bitcoin, who are new to Bitcoin, was anonymous. They don't realize it's pseudo-anonymous. So people can actually go back and, and that, analyze who sent money to whom. So people who I was trying to bring into the space, new investors are like, wait, Bitcoin's not anonymous? Why hasn't someone made it anonymous? So that gave me the idea for Anon. And with masternodes becoming more and more popular and me wanting to be able to reward large holders, I figured by adding masternodes, privacy features onto the Bitcoin blockchain while incorporating the ZK Snox privacy features would be a win-win across the board. Yeah. And my, me, myself, I'm really bullish on the privacy sector for cryptocurrencies. You know, originally that is kind of the vision for cryptocurrencies. And a lot of people got into Bitcoin thinking it was anonymous, like you said. Now they're kind of finding out, ah, it's really pseudo anonymous. Once I send you a transaction once, you then can trace all my transactions and look at my balance. So I think just like a big, uh, bank account, you need to have cryptocurrencies, which can shield uh, people's total net wealth. You know, so that's why I think it's important. Now, what makes, you kind of started talking about it, but what makes Anon unique? I mean, there's already been the Bitcoin private fork as well as others. Why is Anon going to be unique? A lot of people keep asking that question saying, oh, look what happened with Bitcoin private, et cetera, et cetera. So what do you have to say to that? Masternodes. One of the biggest things is masternodes and long-term support. If you look at any of the prior forks, I don't like to single out Bitcoin private in particular, but almost any of the prior forks, they don't have long-term dev support. The communities basically drop them after fork date. We have long-term dev support and we also have masternodes. Our masternodes allow the masternode holders to vote on what to do with the masternode money. I personally, along with the rest of the team, have already contributed over 10,000 Z Classic, which at the time was over $100,000, to this masternode fund. So the masternode already has significant sway with what to do with the future of Anon, which will provide a long-term longevity to it. Longevity adds utility, we're looking more than a year out. We're not looking just two months from now. So the combination of the masternodes along with the actual return that the masternodes will produce. So our tech is better, our masternodes, we have better advisors across the board. We're improved on prior forks. We're just now looking to implement all of our improvements on the live blockchain, the mainnet, which takes place on September 10th. That's awesome. I'm going to ask a couple more technical questions about masternodes here in a little bit. Um, but as of now, are there any exchanges that will be supporting the Z Classic Force fork? As I know, this is very important for retail investors in particular. Yes, as of right now, due to NDAs, obviously I can't share where we are with every single exchange. But the ones that have publicly announced themselves are Trade Satoshis, which is a smaller exchange, but they are very friendly to new investors, and Cryptopia, the second largest holder of Z Classic as far as exchanges go. So Cryptopia and Trade Satoshi's being the number two and the number three exchanges for Z Classic are both supporting. We're hoping that all exchanges where Z Classic is traded will eventually be supported, but right now only those two have announced. We're very excited though, because in the next 24 hours, we'll be announcing more updates, including special wallets that you'll be able to use and different ways to collect the coins. 
because during past forks, if you kept your Z Classic or Bitcoin in an actual exchange, it could take up to a few weeks even to get the new currency, the Anon or the Bitcoin gold or the Bitcoin cash or whatever it was. Well, with Anon, we are creating, we're going to tell the public how to get it much sooner, how to, in essence, get it the same day if they want, or they can be conveniently left in the exchange to take place whenever the exchange does airdrop. That's really interesting. Yeah, I know you guys do have some announcements coming out tomorrow. That is August 30th, guys. Maybe some more exchanges, but he already did say that there will be some wallets and some other features. So make sure to follow them on Twitter to be the first to know about any updates that Anon has over there. So I guess, you know, if I am a ZCL holder or a Bitcoin holder, what ratio of Anon do I receive for being a, a hodler of those coins? So right now the Bitcoin ratio is one to one and the Z Classic ratio is two to one. So if you have one Bitcoin, you will receive one Anon to the address of your Bitcoin to be able to go collect using your private keys. Same thing goes for Z Classic, except for Z Classic, it's a two to one. And the reason we did that is not to push the price of Z Classic by any means, but it's for token economics. Our community is primarily Z Classic based, and there's no reason that masternodes should be mainly controlled by Bitcoin holders. Mm -hmm. There's only four and a half million Z Classic, and there are over 17 million Bitcoin circulating. That would mean that Bitcoin holds 75% of the actual masternode holders when they're the ones who didn't want us to fork it in the first place. So it doesn't make sense to over reward the population, the community that didn't want the fork, whereas the Z Classic holders are so excited about the fork and they are a predominant and in community. So it's a tokenomics perspective to more benefit the Z Classic holders and provide more sway in the Z Classic holders decision making because they control the masternodes. That's very interesting. I know you guys originally were doing the one-to-one -one for Z Classic, but you guys did decide to upgrade to the two-to-one. Uh, obviously, I'm a big believer in that. I, all the reasons that you just said with the token economics. Also, I am a holder of Z Classic. I mined it way back in the day, so I've collected all the forks. I'm excited to participate with Anon because here at this community, we preach passive income a lot. And when Anon came out, you guys started talking about masternodes, and that kind of rang a bell for all of us as we run nodes on other uh, networks, so that's pretty exciting. Now, what will be the ROI on masternodes, and will there be the option to have Anon stake by itself, or do, you, or do you just have to have a certain threshold for masternodes only? That's a combination question, but you need 500 Anon for the masternode. You can set up multiple masternodes if you have different IP addresses. Regarding, we're setting up with different partnerships to pool Anon. Some individuals don't have 500 Anon, but if you have 273 Anon and someone else has 115 and another has the remaining, you could pool until you reach 500 and that would allow you to share in the reward. Obviously, the partnerships and the exchanges that do those types of pooling do take a percentage, so we're not looking for that. We're trying to set it up so everyone can have their 500 Anon and a master note running by itself. That's basically what we're looking forward to, but if you don't have 500, you will be able to set up a master node through a pool service eventually. And do you know the ROI for the masternodes? Like how many Anon coins we're going to earn per month, per year, annually? So I spoke to the devs about that. And the ROIs should be very significant in the beginning. As, well, as more and more people set up masternodes, the ROIs decrease, obviously. So the yeah. ROI will be highest at the beginning. But I can't talk about what projected returns or it becomes more of a security type threshold. So as far as the ROI goes, I can't predict it. But looking at the first two, three weeks of and in masternode, return, you'll be able to easily forecast what you think it'll be. Perfect. And based on that, guys, I think what they're saying is after the announcements tomorrow, you might want to look into one of these other wallet options. So that way you can get your Anon almost same day and set up master nodes on the first day they do go live rather than relying on some of these other exchanges. I know a lot of people rely on the exchanges for ease of use for those who, of us who are not super technically savvy. But uh, for those of you who are, more advanced, I would maybe look to utilize one of these wallets so you can set up your master nodes on day one. Can you kind of just really briefly present the token economics as far as like circulating supply and total supply of Anon? Is there going to be a finite total supply or is this going to kind of be something like Ethereum where there's technically just a, a set inflation rate that can go on forever? Currently, we have be capped at a finite total supply. What we're doing is the total number of Bitcoins in circulation, about 17 million, 17 and a half million and then two to one of the Z Classic. By the time of the actual fork, let's assume about 5 million times two, 10 million, about 27 million Anon will be produced as the original circulating supply. Originally, those total Anon won't be collected per se, because you have to go into your private keys, you have to go collect those Anon. So on January 1st, we're burning all the uncollected Anon. 
So if you haven't actually typed in your private keys or have your Bitcoin or Z Classic in a wallet where you received your ANIN, they'll be gone as of January 1st. So there's not going to be these big boys coming in in a year from now saying, oh my God, I have 100,000 Bitcoin. I can get free ANIN and ANIN is now $100 per coin and then going to collect it. It avoids those types of issues. So January 1st, we're having a token burn and the total number of ANIN that we're allowing is 39 million. So we're going to have about 30 million in circulation at the time of four. But that's not really in circulation because a lot of those will be in wallets and never claimed. Mm -hmm. We'll have a better idea of what total supply is come January 1st because we'll burn everything that's not been claimed. And then we know what total supply will eventually be. It'll eventually be just under 40 million, but that's due to mining and block rewards and all those types of things. So the circulating supply is the more up in the air question because it should be about 30 million, but a lot of those aren't going to be claimed. We're predicting 30 to 40% won't be claimed, maybe even more because so many Bitcoins have never even been transferred. Over 25% have been lost. If they've been lost, they're not going to be collecting their annual. So um, we're predicting 30 million as the total number, but it could be far less than that. Which yeah, that's is as far as economics go. Yeah, well, that's, that's uh, definitely very interesting because like you said, a lot of them are lost or stolen or whatever it may be. And a lot of people that, you know, haven't been keeping up to date with Anon or they're not really interested in Anon, which are the ones that would probably be dumping on the market in your holders, may not claim them in time. Therefore, they'll be burned from the, the total supply and circulating supply which uh, works out well for the token economics there. So I didn't even know about that. That's really interesting. I like that. So it seems that John McAfee has shown a liking to your project. Uh, we all know he likes the privacy sector, but is this publicity something that had to come out of your marketing and treasury fund or did you guys just create an organic relationship with him or how did that really work out? Um, it was actually a completely organic relationship. I met John back in Miami in January during the first conference I actually ever attended. We had mutual friends, mutual acquaintances. We had a drink, spoke about the privacy sector. He actually had no idea that I was going to do any. Um, we met again multiple months later, same type of scenario. And I introduced him to Anne and what I was doing with C Classic. And it sparked his interest. Um, we spoke again probably three, four weeks ago about the project, about um, what type of mutual partnerships we could do. Nothing ever evolved from it, but he definitely took an interest in Anon, as you saw from his tweets. But nothing ever evolved. No funds were paid. Nothing came out of the marketing fund or the masternode fund. But it was a organic relationship, just like our one with Fran. Our first interview with Fran was completely spontaneous. Now he was an advisor, but it took him over a month and a half to commit to an advisory role. Our first time that we met, we literally were just helping him set up his backdrop for his crypto trader. And he asked, like, what are you guys? And we told him the project. And he's like, oh, we're announcing this on Crypto Trader. This will be great. <laughs> so these organic relationships are significantly more valuable than paid marketing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is crypto. So everyone assumes organic relationships are paid marketing. Yeah. Obviously, you guys didn't really make that public. So I wanted to know personally myself. Uh, it's nice to hear that it was an organic relationship because, like you said, that has more meaning, more longevity to it, and that they have the right, you know, concept behind it. You know, they're going to be supporting the project rather than just like, oh, well, they gave us $100,000. Let's shill them on Twitter a few times and then we're never going to talk about them again. So that's pretty exciting that you guys did uh, kind of have that relationship there with those two, two big name players in the ecosystem. Also, there's a couple other big Twitter people out there who have been talking about Anon as well. So I like it. Now, there is only so much market share, in my opinion, that can go to peer-to-peer -to -peer digital currencies and even peer-to-peer -peer privacy currencies. What are you guys going to do over at Anon to differentiate yourselves from the Bitcoin, Litecoin, Monero, Dashes of the world. Are you guys looking to have any other value propositions for the Anon token? Are you focusing primarily on the peer-to-peer -peer transactional sector? We're gonna create utility through like within the Anon platform. So we're looking at a whole bunch of different things. This is gonna go live before the actual announcement tomorrow or I would share all the utility concepts <laughs> I'm coming up Dang with. It. But um, let me see what I can share. So basically, there are different features of every privacy coin or cryptocurrency that make it unique. For example, Monaco has their credit card. Everyone wants to be able to spend cryptocurrency. We're going to do something similar to that. There's no reason that you need a specific crypto card for a specific cryptocurrency. We could create an Anon card that can be filled with Anon, even though Anon is a privacy coin that has masternodes. That the whole project doesn't have to be strictly focused on a point of sale system or a merchant um, system or a marketplace. We're going to build all the different systems all, of all the different cryptocurrencies. So Anon's utility is endless, but it can also be peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer is the easiest one. Being able to transfer it from wallet to wallet, simple. We can get merchants to sign up and that's the easiest process. But building the other utility platforms that entire ICOs have focused on, 
is what's going to make us unique because we theoretically could be five different ICOs in one if we just build the different platforms that they're still working on. No one's really completed a platform and no one has huge market share yet. So we could capitalize on all of these different um, highly sought after concepts and technologies solely with Anon by being a front runner in the space. That's really interesting. You know, I, I just kind of saw you guys as another, just another peer-to-peer digital currency, but it seems like you guys have something on the horizon and some announcements to make there regarding the utility to Anon moving forward. Also on another note, you know, not Anon related, but I know that a dev team has stepped back in for Z, Z Classic guys. So, you know, it kind of hedges here. Obviously, no, we're not, nobody wants to jump into ZCL and try to ride a wave and worry about getting dumped on. But at least you might be protected here by a good project in Anon, and a dev team is coming on board with Z Classic once again. Uh, do you have any information on that Z Classic dev team? Because I know they did make a public announcement that they are supporting your project as well pretty recently. Yes, the Z Classic dev team is actually great. There were two dev teams competing for the position, Z Classic Blue and Z Classic Community, CE. And um, Nimbosa of CE was actually awarded the GitHub. They're, both teams would have been great options. Um, realistically, I think they're both going to help embrace each other versus combat each other because now that a team's been chosen, there's no reason the developers need to be combative. This is crypto. We should be working together. My Z Classic, my team that's currently working on Z Classic forking into Anon will still help with Z Classic's code down the road. So I don't want this to be a system and a space with animosity. I want this to be a space where everyone's cooperative and working together versus where it's combative. So as far as the new team goes, they are a fantastic team. The Z Classic Twitter has been showing support to both Anon and Z Classic again. And that is really important because that's the, that's how they communicate with the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought was interesting as well and kind of protect some people who are worried about, you know, I know you don't want to talk about price, but usually with these forks, there's a run up and then a subsequent dump after or just prior to the snapshot. And I think having this other Z Classic development team on board really can help protect and hedge some of the investors there. So, you know, we've heard a lot about Anon, Anon and kind of what you guys got on the road, roadmap, et cetera. We can't really talk about much more because you guys do have this big announcement tomorrow. But what is kind of your overall opinion on the crypto ecosystem as a whole right now? You know, the bear market's been hot and heavy, but what do you think's going on with blockchain technology and cryptocurrency moving forward? I think it's about the actual revolution of both the financial system and the legal system combined with the banking systems, which is more financial. I keep seeing posts about how many U.S. students own cryptocurrency. That's not when the difference is going to be made. It's how many people in Zimbabwe, Venezuela, these countries where they've been suffering hyperinflation for years and now they're completely converting to crypto. I want to know what percentage of people in those countries are using crypto. Those are the important numbers. So I think crypto as a whole will take over the economies as far as a means of transfer. Once upon a time we were using seashells as a means of trade. So we've gone from seashells and rocks and literally just goods for goods to now we have actual currency. And we're going to look back in 10, 20 years and look at all this printed currency and think, how did we waste all these resources on metals and paper money? And how is a quarter worth more than a $100 bill when the metal in the quarter is significantly worth more than the continent in the $100 bill? So we're going to look back and just smile at the, not the stupidity, but the naivety that the entire population believed in for so long when crypto does take place. So I'm very bullish on the sector as a whole. Will Bitcoin be the end-all, be-all cryptocurrency 10 years from now? I have no idea. But will it increase in value significantly before it halves in 2020? Of course. The difficulty to create a Bitcoin is going to double. Demand is not going to shrink by 50% between now and that. So that means automatically the price of Bitcoin should appreciate. How much will be up to the public? But if demand increases in the next two years by one, two, three hundred percent, that means the price of Bitcoin should also simultaneously increase one, two, three hundred percent. And then it becomes twice as hard to create a new one. So I'm very, very bullish on the sector. I'm very bullish on cryptocurrencies due to the economic system of the world. And I really look forward to see what 2020 has. That's really interesting. I like to ask that, you know, everybody, I've had John McAfee on here, Charles Hoskinson, now you as people from Horizon, from all over the place, as well as Digibyte. And I love to see your guys' opinion. You guys are in the weeds dealing with it each and every day, different devs. And also it kind of formulates my opinion as well. You know, I'm on here discussing cryptocurrencies. It seems that we agree on a lot here. You know, I think really these third world countries and these places that are in economic crisis are the ones that need cryptocurrencies. And I think the, the stats uh, when they say, oh, 8% of students own cryptocurrency now is really skewed as well. Because just because they own it, that could be $5 worth of Bitcoin. 
that's not changing any token dynamics for the price of Bitcoin. Once they actually start every paycheck dollar cost averaging into these projects is when that can start making a difference as well. Exactly. Is there anything else I missed on Anon before we wrap it up? Any last thoughts? No, we talked about, we touched on the masternodes. We touched on the ratio. One of the other important things is the actual masternode reward. It's 35%. So that what is one of the things that makes us unique from other privacy coins. Some privacy coins reward both masternodes and miners. We do both. And so people who are uncomfortable with the mining sector, but do hold a quantity of Anon will be able to enjoy the masternodes. Those who are very tech savvy and have been mining like yourself, you can still enjoy mining in. So we're trying to appeal to all the populations. And by doing so, we're, we're really thinking we're going to have significant presence in the space and through our partnerships and our own platforms, building the utility of the space, which is most important in my opinion. That is true. Now, real quickly, what is going to be the algorithm for Anon? The algorithm for Anon is a Equihash modification. We're okay. using Equihash, but we modded it to make it ASIC resistant. That's really interesting. There you go, guys. Another ASIC resistant cryptocurrency coming into play. I would definitely go follow them on Twitter. Look in the description below for all of the addresses over there. And let's see. The way you can get it is by being a holder of Bitcoin or Z Classic. And any exchange that supports the fork will probably have Anon live for trade shortly thereafter. So you can buy it on the exchange if you kind of want to wait for the market to figure out the set price over there as well. So until next time, guys, stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies right here. I learned crypto.